Okay, so before I started my talk, uh, like what Anne mentioned, I will show you the code that you should not do, especially if you're running if if you're running a very big social network with lots and lots of code. So first off, we start with how do you inject inline C inside your Ruby code? <laughs> so actually we had this problem uh, a few days ago we're in uh, Unicorn was having problems uh, scaling to multiple projects and we initially thought that maybe we could try uh, using the scheduler mechanism of Linux so that you could bind a certain process to a, pro to a certain processor so CPU binding or processor binding. Well, this is the code that you can do. So, so you're saying you shouldn't do this? Yeah, okay. don't do don't. that. <laughs> <laughs> so that code actually hogs the processor. Just mean, type that in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so essentially it uses the deeper kernel API of Linux inside Ruby. So if you want to have an exercise in masochism, don't do this. Uh, so it's quite interesting. That's yeah. the first time I've actually seen C injected into. <coughs> actually, I've done that. Like, I mean, I've done this code like a week, a week, a week or two ago, and JB mentioned that I don't want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> I was really excited when I saw that. <laughs> I want to see that. I, I, I'm just going to say, it's like from the outset, do bad props. <laughs> what What about using the nice uh, command from the Hmm? Uh, you're talking about uh, CPU affinity, right? Yeah. Uh, what about uh, using the the nice? You should use that. Oh, <laughs> don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the issue we were actually trying to solve at the time was we thought that uh, all of our unicorns were basically just um, sticking on one core and not spreading out across multiple cores on the server. As it turns out, we were just basically not giving the unicorn anywhere near enough work to do. So after we decided to run some more tests and truly punish it, all of a sudden the core, other cores just go, oh, now you want me to do something. Okay, well, fine, I'm bringing the unicorn over here and let's get going. Uh -huh. So here's my, here's my actual talk. So my talk would be, one, okay. My talk would be about distributed parallel programming or computing via the, the message passing interface. Or in short, how do you run multiple lines of code over multiple machines and with no breaks? So that's actually a bad idea if some of you are operations people because operations people love to throttle. And people like me don't like to throttle. So this is what you should not do uh, especially on high volume side. So, the first thing that I'm going to discuss about is about the message passing interface. So, the message passing interface is actually the de facto standard when you're trying to run a program across multiple machines. So, what it does is you have a certain master node or a program that would send messages to other nodes. So, messages messages are being passed from worker to from, from master to worker or from worker to Fellow worker. <coughs> so, if you want to do something parallel, actually, this is the de facto standard. So, if you're doing high performance computing or supercomputing, you want to say compute, uh, make a weather forecast, you'll need to learn this. <coughs> so, the message passing interface is actually uh, implemented in a lot of languages. So, the classic or the default or the classic uh, supercomputer uh, implementations, well, one, the first one is usually C. So C is for cookie, it's good enough for me, but then the next is Fortran. So if you're a dinosaur in the 70s, use Fortran. Incidentally, uh, the last time I used Fortran was about in 2003. <laughs> so I did some fast Fourier transforms in Fortran back then because I didn't know that I can do it in Ruby or I can do it in Python or I can do it in C++ much easier. Then in C++, uh, 
there's this nice wrapper called Boost MPI. I last used this like two years ago. So it's really fun to use, uh, very elegant. Then Python has too many implementations of MPI and they can't agree. Why, why can't we just standardize on one implementation? Then uh, OCaml, .NET has an implementation. Then Ruby has also an implementation. So that's what I'm going to show you later. Then a lot more languages, as long as they support a, an external binding to C, you could more or less implement API. So this is how you'll write your code with Ruby MPI. So before we proceed, I'm going to show you a real uh, the code, some of the code that I've wrote, written two years ago. Uh, Yeah, here. So here is a real life code. Uh, the, the passwords are sanitized. Uh, those tables don't exist anymore. So essentially what this does is we had this problem back then we're in we have a very big uh, friends table that was infected with cancelled users. So if we were if we're going to run it one by one it will take us a month to clean all of the uh, of the cancelled users from the friends table. Now, with running this, I mean you could shave uh, you could shave the running time from about a month with manual uh, with manual overrides to like less than three days. So what it does is uh, it has a pro it has a master program that says, okay, you have a 32 gigabyte fi uh, friends table divide it into like a hundred batches, then give give a worker to one batch. So a hundred workers would run all at the same time and it would clean the friends table in no time. So this is where uh, I get my warning. Uh, one, this program does not run with breaks. So it has the potential to saturate your network, especially if you're running on more than four uh, four servers with four quad cores, so four machines with four quad cores, so just like uh, four times four, so like 16 workers hammering the database and it doesn't do it with breaks, so it has the potential to knock your, say, search engine offline. <laughs> <laughs> So for quite some time as it turned out. Yeah. Uh, well, a little like four hours. Uh -huh. <laughs> so the site mm, a site can go from perfectly normal to like a white page in like four hours with that code. So we never got the clearance to really run it, but we got I mean we got to experiment with it. So it, well it runs within less than three days, but no one was crazy enough to allow this to run in production. We really need so many your site is gone. Yeah. <laughs> Could you serialize out your friend graph somehow? Like like get it out of the database so it's not you're not going against the the main database or Well, we have a memcache cluster that does that, but it's gonna take too long, especially with the network traffic. So can it can it hold all the entire graph? Well it three machines hold the entire graph. Okay. Three machines with 16 gigabytes of memory each, or 32, for God. Anyway, so I mean, I've got to challenge myself. What if I start uh, converting this code from C++ to Ruby? So using the using the API code. I mean, I just started this like a few minutes ago, so I was able to translate uh, the first. So many lines, oh sorry, first so many lines of this code. So I got as far as this. So I was able to translate it to this one. So it's cleaner, more elegant, and definitely more readable. Now I haven't yet figured out how to implement the MPI broadcast because apparently MPI, uh, Ruby MPI doesn't really have a very good interface against the C library because it it directly translates C library calls to Ruby methods. 
unlike in the case of C++ wherein they have a very nice binding that supports the standard templating library. So yeah, so it's still a work in progress of how to translate it. So okay, so let's have a demo on, on how. Yeah. Is, is MPI, I'm actually curious of what level is MPI, is, is it actually a, a Bind, Ruby bindings for a C library or it's it is a Ruby binding for a C library. Ah, okay. So it's this is different from from or how is it related or how is it different from from the uh, IPC or interprocess communication something like that. It uses them. Ah, okay. So this is different from the new new players in towns like uh, like the uh, distributed computing. I think this is the basis the basis that is being used when you're using distributed programming uh, environments like Hadoop. I mean, so Hadoop ProcReduce actually implements uh, assemblies of MPI, or at least they implement the message passing interface when interfacing with multiple machines. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have the MPI sample that I've, I've written uh, on my Linux virtual machine. It's kind of tough to compile the open MPI bindings in, in Mac OS X. So here's what happens when you try to run it with only one processor. Boring. Nothing pretty. So let's try with two. Ah yes, something gets printed. Now let's try again with four. So, what happens here is it uses, uh, in my case, since I'm, since I'm not network, it uses four CPU threads. So all of them are done simultaneously. As you, see, as you have seen, uh, four threads are being run, and it all prints out simultaneously. Now, what happens if I increase it? To Wait, see? why did nothing print out when you ran it from four? Hmm? Well, it, it looks like it's like zero, one, <coughs> yes. three. Yeah, actually the, the n minus one. Yeah, it's n minus one because uh, the first thread is usually reserved for the master process. Oh, okay. Oh, so you're just printing out the children. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what happens here is the workers yeah. have to.